So a little while back, I did a video talking about how I bought two different Mac minis, a base model and an upgraded model. And I talked about the benefits, the disadvantages and things like that. And that video very quickly exploded and became the most popular video on my channel, but also just a generally well-viewed tech video. And I was floored by this. I was super happy with how that video came out. However, with that video doing as well as it did, I started getting a lot of emails through my business email from companies asking if they could send me a product for me to review it. And I usually turn these videos down because generally what they want is either a positive review no matter what, or they want to send me a product that either has nothing to do with anything I do on my channel or just a product I'm really not interested in reviewing like a keyboard or a mouse. However, one company emailed me about a product that I had actually already bought a similar version to and was happy with, but still kind of disappointed with. And this product was something that I figured would be a good option for fixing the two main issues I had with the Mac Mini, which was storage and port selection. When Quiz Labs offered to send me their USB-C hub with a hard drive enclosure, I said yes. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, this product was sent to me by Quiz Labs. That's what made this video possible. However, they are seeing this video right alongside you. I didn't give them any previews, no copy approval, nothing like that. And they were even all right with a comparison video, but I straight up told them like, I don't do paid or positive guarantee reviews. Like this is gonna be good, bad, ugly, the whole deal. And they were all right with that. So credit where it's due. Thanks for sending me this. Thanks for not limiting what I can say about this. One of the reasons why I said yes. So anyway, with that being said, you're about to watch my genuine thoughts on this product, not a paid promotion. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So starting out with the unboxing, you have a pretty general unboxing, a little instruction manual, the accessory itself, two USB-C cables, one for power and one for USB-C connection to the Mac, which we'll talk about the power one in a minute, and then a screwdriver to get to the drive enclosure at the bottom. Now, one thing I'll say here is I do like to see more recyclable packaging, and most of this box is completely recyclable cardboard, but the product was wrapped in plastic. I know that that's a pretty common practice, but I would like to see something more like what Apple does where it's wrapped in paper that so everything can just be recycled, you know what I mean? But I know that's just a personal thing. I'm not holding it against them because a lot of companies do it. But once it's out of the box, we have one thing that I was expecting to see that I didn't see, which was a power brick because this is a powered accessory considering you are running two drives and a lot of ports. Now the good news is it can be run off something as basic as a little five watt charger like Apple's power brick here, or I'm actually running mine off of one of the USB ports on a power strip. So you can run it off of pretty much anything, but it would have been nice to include a basic spec matched power brick. But you know, the fact that these are lying around everywhere in a lot of people's homes, if you own a smartphone, I don't think it's the biggest deal. I actually even tried powering it off the Mac mini itself and it worked pretty well. So. I guess it's not a big deal. Now on the aesthetic side of the device, it basically looks like it's meant for the Mac mini. You've got a silver base that is the exact same size as the Mac mini. You just put the Mac mini on top, it adds a bit of vertical space, but there's no horizontal space taken up, which is great because adding ports to a device usually falls on a dock to do. And a dock usually sits alongside the Mac mini, taking up more space on your desk. And for my tastes, I personally hate that. So being able to actually take up less space and just raise the Mac mini off the desk a little bit, I'm totally fine with. Now I mentioned that the issues I had with the Mac mini were storage and port selection. Now we're going to start with port selection because it's the easiest to talk about. And the Mac mini's port selection in my original video I said was not a big deal, but the more I used it, the more I found out that it really kind of was a big deal. As somebody who's more of a power user, I would kill for more USB ports, both the A and C variety, because one of my USB-C ports is constantly used up running one of my two monitors. And when I've tried adapters that give me video and more ports, it always steps the video down in resolution, which I don't want. So one of those ports is always video. When it comes to the USB-A ports, I run a mass storage drive connected directly to the Mac so that there's less chance of it dropping out and I get full speed. And then I have a USB-A hub that I put on the floor because I hate taking up space on my desk. And that runs a few other things like the dongle for my keyboard and my audio interface. And really that leaves me with one useful port, which is a single USB-C port. Now it's Thunderbolt 4 capable as well, but this is not a Thunderbolt 4 accessory. So you are limited to the max speed of current USB-C connectivity, but that still means that you can run quite a number of ports off of it. And well, these guys did exactly that. So around front of this device, you have two USB 3.0 ports and one USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, both in the USB-A variety, and then two 
SD card slots, one micro and one full size. This is probably my favorite feature because up until now I've been reaching around back of my monitor and my Mac and plugging this in. It's got to the point where I was almost tempted to just spin the Mac around and deal with having a bunch of ports run over the top, but now I have everything I need right up front so I can just get rid of that. Could have made a more graceful throw, but we'll keep that take instead. And then just next to those is another USB 3.1 port, but it's USB Type-C. So I can run devices like my T5 drives at full speed right out of that. But there's a caveat. USB 3.1 in either generation is easily capable of fully saturating the connection running into the back of the Mac Mini. That means that if you're running a 3.1 device like my T5 drive at full speed and then connect another accessory, you can actually watch the speed of your 3.1 devices drop slightly. And that's because it has to make space in the bandwidth lineup to actually allow other devices to talk to the Mac Mini. This isn't a huge deal because you're not normally running a 3.1 device at full whack all the time. It's usually in little bits here and there. The only times I noticed it was in high speed data transfers and usually in reading SD cards. I don't know why specifically SD cards really did this, but it didn't happen if I was just transferring an SD card or just transferring a drive with a bunch of data. But if I was doing both at the same time, you would watch the speeds dip in both cases. Again, not a huge deal because most people aren't really fully saturating a connection. And most of the time when I saw it, it was just for testing. So I would say that that's not a huge trade-off especially considering that one connection around back has given you all these ports and they're right up front, which in my opinion is how Apple should have done it from the start, but we know how Apple is. Now next to all these ports are three lights. One is just a power indicator, just letting you know that the device is on and connected, but the other two are status lights for what's inside of this hub. And this is honestly what I was most excited for because while Apple's storage is good and very fast, it is also very expensive and non-upgradable once you buy it. In this Mac Mini, I personally opted for 512 gigabytes of storage because I figured I would put all my apps and temporary files on the main storage drive and then rely on external storage for any other files I might need. However, with the port limits that I mentioned earlier, that quickly became a bigger issue than I thought. Having to pick and choose which drives you want and having to reach around behind the Mac to unplug and change the drives whenever you wanted a different one was a massive hassle. I would rather have something that was just always there, always connected, and well, this answers that. Now, having a two and a half inch drive enclosure isn't anything super special in my opinion. In fact, the cheaper dock that I bought also has a two and a half inch drive enclosure. And I put a solid state drive in that, I put a solid state drive in this. However, what I was more excited for was the NVMe enclosure. Yeah, that's right. You can actually put a full PCIe Gen 3 NVMe drive into this. I bought a one terabyte SanDisk one and slapped it in immediately. And the install is actually really easy. They use this rubber grommet instead of a screw like other manufacturers. So you just line it up and pop the grommet in and you're done. Now, I haven't tested this with a heat sink yet, mainly because there were no heat sinks available in my local Best Buy. And by the time I did this video, I completely forgot to buy one, if I'm totally honest. But so far the drive's been fine. I haven't felt any sort of crazy heat coming off of it, so that's a plus. And even if that was the case, there's not a whole lot of airflow, so whether or not you add a heat sink, I haven't had any issues, but your mileage may vary. Now for my specific setup, I went with a two terabyte QVO SSD through the SATA connection port in the two and a half inch drive bay. And I did this because that drive holds things like my top five videos, my reaction videos, and anime based content. I do those more frequently and I don't have my camera settings cranked for those videos. So I didn't need a crazy amount of speed and I just needed more storage and reliability. And for that, it works fine. You get full SATA connection speeds out of this thing and editing off of it is a treat. So with all my anime content going onto the two terabyte drive, I use the NVMe drive, the one terabyte, for all my tech videos. And the reason for this is because the NVMe theoretically should be faster, up to two gigabits per second for the one that I bought. And when I do any of my tech videos, I crank the settings on my camera so that I get the best image quality and have the most options for changing settings later and adjusting color. And I figured throwing an NVMe drive in this thing would be the easiest way to fix that and I can basically just edit off of it, no issues, we're good. However, this is where I came across my biggest disappointment for this accessory, which is that the NVMe drive 
doesn't run anywhere near full speed. This Samsung SSD should be able to run at upwards of two gigabits per second theoretical. And I actually took this drive out and put it into a PC and ran the same tests and I got the advertised speeds. Inside this though, the speeds I get are closer to a SATA connection. Not bad, but definitely nowhere near what I was actually expecting, which is really disappointing. I don't know if they limited this due to the controller in the accessory not being fast enough or the cable in the back not being fast enough. I really don't know because when I took the SSD out, the two terabyte one, and ran just the one terabyte NVMe, I still got the same speed. So it's not like the bandwidth from both drives is limiting one. So basically the way I see it is even though I have two separate drives dedicated to do different types of videos, I basically just added three terabytes of SATA speed SSD to the device. It's a bit of a letdown and I do really wish that the NVMe drive could run faster, you know, really stretch its legs, but I guess maybe that's why I'm not having any heating issues is because it just doesn't run fast enough to cause them. At the end of the day, that is probably the biggest letdown for me with this device and I've still yet to find a perfect dock with a drive enclosure and ports around front that can be added to the Mac Mini, but I will say this came damn close. It fixed the USB problem, which was that I usually only saw ones with USB 2 and a handful of USB 3s. All USB 3, sign me up. And the fact that I do now have two drives as opposed to one is great, but the fact that both the more expensive one with the NVMe drive and the less expensive and theoretically supposed to be slower drive of the SATA connection are the same speeds, that sucks. Oh, and before we move on, the only other thing that I want to mention, but I don't know if it's the M1's fault or the hub's fault, is that when I plug in any other form of storage, whether it be out of my toaster or an external SSD or whatever, as soon as the Mac Mini goes to sleep, it disconnects all the drives. It doesn't do this when I don't have another storage device connected, but again, I don't know if this is something to do with the Mac Mini or the hub, but I figured it was worth a mention. But overall, I'm still glad that Quizlabs sent me this product for a couple reasons. The biggest ones being it really streamlined my workflow, being able to take my SD card right out of my camera, slap it in and transfer it right up front without having to flip it around or plug in an accessory is awesome. And the fact that I can still add storage is great. And generally it's cheaper to buy multiple drives of varying storages versus just buying one massive drive, especially if you're going solid state. So that's a plus. But the downsides of having the port speed limitations if you're running more than one full speed device up front is a bit of a letdown. And the biggest letdown is of course the NVMe drives. And my suggestion with that is if you're gonna put an NVMe drive into this device, save the money, don't buy a PCIe one, buy a SATA based NVMe SSD. That will be probably a little less painful because those will run at the speeds you would expect versus expecting two gigabytes and only getting 670 megabits. So after all that's been said, you and Quiz Labs, if they're watching, are probably asking, do I recommend this product? And my answer is yes, I do still recommend this product. I've yet to find the perfect expansion accessory for the Mac Mini. There's always some caveat, but the caveats that this makes aren't the biggest in the world. And for that, I think it's a little bit closer to a perfect expansion accessory. Way better than what I've seen from any other competition and definitely a league above what I actually bought myself. So again, links in the description, go check it out. And also, side note, full credit to whoever filmed the video on your website in HDR and posted it because I got blinded by like a little side video, which was hilarious. Whoever filmed that in HDR, I appreciate your effort. But either way, that's been it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Last tech video for a while. I promise we're gonna move back to top fives, guess the animes and some reviews. But for now, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Make sure to be there and have a good one.